I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast, For the Health of It, episode 55. Remember to subscribe to our podcasts, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad we could spend a little time together. And the question I get, if you've listened to my shows before, you know that I'm a vegan. I don't eat any animal products. I've been doing this for well over 30 years. And people say the big question, where do you get your amino acids from? Where do you get your protein from? That's the question. Where do you get your proteins from? And where do you get your calcium from? And is it safe? And oh, I could never give up my animal products. I love my cheese too much. I love my meat too much. So we're going to talk today about eating a plant-based diet. How do you do it? Is it safe? And there are some things you have to be careful with, but just like there's things you have to be careful with if you don't eat uh, plants a lot, you eat an um, uh, all-meat diet or you eat all a uh, keto diet with a lot of fat in it, there are certain things you have to just be aware of. And somebody said the other day, um, they said, well, the reason I eat animal products is because I need to get my amino acids. And I thought, wow, okay, let's educate some folks here. Proteins are made up of amino acids. So whether it's a fingernail or tree bark or a, a piece of grass, if there's protein in it, which there is, they're made up of amino acids. And there's only so many amino acids, and depending how they're shuffled around will determine if it's tree bark or if it's fingernail or if it's eyelid or if it's liver. So all proteins are that. They're made up of amino acids. And so when you digest a protein, you break the proteins down into amino acids and then amino acids get reassembled and they become different things in your body. So you don't need animal protein to get your protein. Because think about this. Where do the animals that you eat, cows, pigs, where do they get their protein from? Well, pigs might eat other animals, but cows are not supposed to eat other animals. Cows eat plants. They take those, pro those proteins, break them into amino acids, reassemble them, and then create sirloin or top round or chuck or whatever meat slices there are. First job ever, fun fact, first job I ever had. I was uh, 11 years old. I delivered meat for a butcher. Interesting that I would become a vegan later on. But so you can get protein from plants, the same proteins that are found in animals because that's where the animals get their proteins from, from the plants. So don't freak out about the protein thing. Most people get way too many protein, way too much protein in their diet. And your body only needs about 8% of its total caloric intake is protein. If you're an Olympic athlete, maybe 10%. Anything beyond that is wasted. And it has to be filtered out of the body and it goes through the liver, it goes through the kidneys and has to be broken down. And if you have too much protein, it puts a major strain on the liver and the kidneys. Animal protein also stimulates something called the MTOR pathway. And the MTOR pathway is the beginning of cancer. Plant proteins do not stimulate the MTOR pathway. So plant proteins better for you, easier to digest. If you're environmentalist, better for the environment, cheaper. So I don't see a downside to not eating animal products except this. There is one. What I remember anyway, animal products taste good. I remember those days. So that's the upside is they taste good. The downside is everything else. So let's go through a couple of things here, a couple of notes I took on why it's a good idea to eat a plant-based diet. And then we're going to talk about concerns you might have. What if you're breastfeeding? What if you're a child? What if you're an adolescent? You're going to school. You're under a lot of stress. You've had surgery. Let's talk about that. And let's dispel some of those myths today. Uh, 20 veg vegetarians can live off the land required by one meat eater. So we talk about land and saving the land, saving the rainforest. If that's your thing, that's great. And I support that. Um, but if no other reason... It's much more sustainable. Every three seconds, a child dies of starvation somewhere in the world. Again, I'm not being a, a bleeding heart liberal here, but I want you to understand that all the food that we're using, and I'm going to give you some more statistics here, uh, to feed the animals, to feed us, we could just feed us. If Americans reduced their meat consumption by 10%, we would, it, would, uh, it would free 12 million tons of grain, enough to feed 60 million people. That's the whole population of, let's say, Great Britain. So there's plenty of food out there. We're just misappropriating it. If all Americans became vegetarian, we, uh, we would have enough. We would free up enough grain to feed uh, 600 million people. And that's the population of India. 
So there's plenty of plenty of, of food out there which is feeding the cows. If we continue to clear the land to raise cattle at this rate, 50 years from now, it's going to be unsustainable anyway. So one thing interesting about humanity is we come up with something and it looks like it's the end of the world. And then technology comes along and saves the day. The new uh, technology that was recently introduced was growing meat in a laboratory. You take some cells some from a cow or person, I guess, too. I don't know. And you can grow these cells into a piece of meat. And then you take those cells and make them grow into other meat and other meat. And so now we don't have to kill an animal, which is an interesting point. And someone said to me, would you eat laboratory-grown meat? And I said, no, because there's a lot of downsides to eating animal products. Uh, Acre yields 165 pounds of beef and 20,000 pounds of potatoes. So 165 pounds versus 20,000 pounds. So if you're looking at it from an environmental standpoint, I can go on and on. 25 gallons of water to produce one pound of wheat. 25 25 gallons of water to produce one pound of meat. 2,500 gallons to produce one pound of beef. And there's refrigeration, electricity, uh, gas that's produced, nitrates and pesticides used on the crops to feed livestock end up in the rivers. And then it gets into the water, gets into the plants. Uh, whenever you hear about an E. coli outbreak, let's say it's spinach or salad. Oh, can't eat spinach anymore. It has E. coli in it. E. coli comes from the bowels of an animal. So the spinach don't produce the E. coli. It's usually because we had animal production getting into the water that we watered the, um, the, the, the manure of the animals get into the water and then we water the plants and that's where it comes from. And again, I don't want to bore you with details because I understand that this generation, our demographics, uh, don't like statistics. They like fun facts. We, see, we study this stuff when you're radio and television. They want fun facts. They want to learn something. They want to be entertained. They want to be told stories. So that's what we're told. And I've got tons and tons of uh, information here. Health, vegetarians have 20% lower rate of mortality from all diseases. They live longer. If you gave up just dairy products, studies have shown you can increase your life expectancy by about eight years. If you gave up all animal products, you could probably increase your life expectancy by about 11 years. Quality years, by the way. And it's so much cheaper. This is the thing I hear all the time from patients that come in our offices. And I, I, I never ask anyone to go to a plant-based diet. I give them information and what they decide to do with it is up to them. And in fact, I have one close friend who's a vegan. All my other friends are you know, either vegetarian or, or, or meat eaters. And that's okay. It's your choice. I never want to force my understanding down your throat. But if you're listening to the show, I'm going to give you my facts and then you can decide what you want to do with it. And I've never had a person ever in the history of my 34 years in practice ever come to me and say, Dr. Joe, I changed my diet. And boy, did I regret that. Never. I hear it every day. They either don't do it or they do a little bit of it. And every little step you take is going to make it better and better. So you don't have to do everything all the time. You can take little steps and go that way. So this is interesting. Position of the American Dietetic Association. Vegetarian diets. The position of the American Dietetic Association that appropriately planned vegetarian diets, including uh, total vegetarian or vegan diets, are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits in the prevention of certain diseases. Well-planned vegetarian diets are appropriate for individuals during all stages of the life cycle, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescence, and for athletes. And this is the big trend. Because we we like to follow trends. And the trend this year, uh, and predicted to be next year, in the food world is vegan diets and plant-based diets. That's the hot trend. And restaurants are going to it. And the other trend is that athletes are now going to a plant-based diet. And all the ones I've seen are just thrilled with their results. And if you, you just go online, look up you know, vegan athletes or vegetarian athletes, and their performance has, enhan- has been enhanced tremendously. Because the number one consumer of energy we have as humans is romance. It's a family show, so I'll keep it clean. The number two consumer of energy we have is digestion. And the hardest thing to digest, the hardest food we can digest is animal products. So I do a, a lecture right around uh, Valentine's Day. It's really the only time I do a repeat lecture. It's, and it's one lecture a year. And I do it on uh, food and romance. And we break down, uh, if you had a, 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 a typical romantic diet, a romantic meal, let's assume we go out for steak and lobster. We're going to have bread and butter and coffee and cheesecake and a, c- a couple of glasses of wine or champagne. And so we break down what happens to your body when you eat these foods and how it's the anti- romance 
not the pro-romance food that we're eating, what we consider a romantic or a Valentine's Day dinner. And it really lowers your testosterone. Alcohol, for example, lowers your testosterone levels. Uh, meat is the hardest thing to digest, uses up a lot of energy. A lot of the commercial meats we're eating now are, uh, they, they give them estrogen-like compounds to make them grow bigger. Uh, poultry, they'll give antibiotics to make them grow bigger. And the estrogen counteracts essentially testosterone in your body. And testosterone is your love hormone. And it's not just for love. Okay, we'll keep it clean here. Uh, it's for muscle building, but not just for biceps and triceps. Your heart's a muscle. Your colon's a muscle. Your blood vessels are muscles. And so as your testosterone levels drop, men and women, these muscles become weaker. And so naturally, as we get older, our, our testosterone is going to drop. And we can do things to fight that. And the easiest thing you can do to fight that is go to a plant-based diet because the animals have estrogen in their meat, in the, in the flesh. And when you're eating that, many times they do, when you're eating that, that estrogen is now affecting your testosterone levels. It's counteracting it. And so one way to keep your testosterone active is to stay away from the animal products, especially if you're going to do a commercial animal products, because most of them have antibiotics and steroids and hormones and chemicals. If you eat organic animal products, that's a way better choice. So if you're going to do animal products, I recommend organic only. And that would be meat, butter, cheese, yogurt, eggs, ice cream, because uh, you're not going to get the steroids and hormones and chemicals and pesticides and herbicides, and they're not fed genetically modified foods, and uh, they're healthier. The levels of omega-3 fatty acids are higher in organic meats versus non-organic meats. So there's many more benefits to organic. Now, I don't know this. However, I've been told that organic meats taste better. Now, they are more expensive, but that's okay because you're not supposed to be eating a lot. No one out there says you should eat a lot of meat. I know Dr. Atkins said you can go on a high meat diet and bacon diet and lose weight. Yeah, but then you increase your risk of heart disease and cancer and you clog up your bowels and bowel cancer increases and your testosterone levels drop. And so, yeah, it's an it's a okay way to lose weight, but it should only be used short term, maybe one or two months. And I would never recommend it at all. But if you're going to do it, make sure it's one or two months. And that's what I always try to do in these workshops and lectures and shows that I do is I try to give you options. I understand that you're not going to be as wacky as I am. You're not going to get so crazy that you're going to go on a plant-based diet and it's about 60 to 80% raw. Some people do 100% raw. I understand that. But it's a better if you're going to make small steps to make the wise choice. If you're going to eat meat, make sure it's organic and dairy. Results of an evidence-based uh, review show the vegetarian diet is associated with lower risk of heart disease. Vegetarians also appear to have lower den uh, low-density lipoprotein cholesterol levels, the bad cholesterol uh, lower blood pressure, lower rates of hypertension, type 2 diabetes. Uh, they're better than the non-vegetarians. So as I wander through this life and I wax philosophical about life, I wonder why would you do something that's bad for you? Why would you make a, a conscious decision to do something that's not good for you? I know alcohol, we, I, I was just a guest on a show earlier, um, and we were talking about alcohol. Three million people a year die from alcohol. And it, many times it's accidents, but then it could be disease and it could be uh, stupidity. <laughs> you know, you, you're drunk, you do something stupid. And the problem is that, that those numbers are going higher and higher. And of course, this article said we need to have government intervention. The government needs to intervene. Well, here's my thought on that. I think the way we need, need to intervene is to educate the public. More shows like this, where you can sit there and, sit and learn something logically and then make a decision. I still choose to do this. I understand the consequences and I still choose to do this. Great. I'm all for that. You can do whatever you want as long as it doesn't hurt me. That's always my thought in life and hurt other people either, not just me. But if I give you logic, and this is why this show has been so successful, I give you logic and you say, I really can't argue that point, can I? You know, I'll joke around my office manager sometimes. He'll come up with something that we need to do in the office and I, I say, you know, I hate to agree with you, but you're right. I have to agree with you. you I, there's no way I can get around this by, except for the fact that you're right and my way of looking was flawed. You were right, and I probably need to do this. And that's what I'd like for you to do when you listen to my shows. And if you go to my website, drjoe.com, we have over 1,000 hours and so many different topics on healthcare. 
And then you can say, listen, I want to listen to, I don't know, men's health or women's health or uh, weight loss or uh, environmental toxicity or electromagnetic frequencies from radio shows or bone health or digestive health or mental health. And you can pick the topics you want to listen to. And we have two ways to do it. We have it on SoundCloud, so you can download them if you want. And then we have them videos and audios that's on a YouTube channel and you can watch and listen there. So either way is fine. Some people are visual learners. Some people want to download it, listen to them when they're working out. Well over a thousand hours of shows, all there, no charge. That's my gift to you. So educate yourself and then you can make a decision. I understand, Dr. Joe, that uh, meat is the number one consumer of energy. However, I still choose to do this and I'm willing to sacrifice my energy levels or increase my risk of cancer or increase my risk of heart disease. It's your call. Whatever you decide to do is up to you. But many times people, and I get it all the time, they listen to the shows and they go, I never looked at it like that before. Or they say the three words I love, that makes sense. I've never heard it put like that before. It's so clear now. Now it makes sense and now I can make a better decision. And I get that from hospitals, doctors, um, physicians, assistants, nurses, people in the healthcare profession who say, I've never looked at the way you explain things like that. That's a better way to practice healthcare. And that's why the trend is going toward eating better. Chiropractic care is on skyrocketing. More and more insurance companies are saying, yes, we're going to start covering chiropractic care, nutrition, massage, because it's cheaper for them. I never understood this. Why would an insurance company not cover something that they're going to save money on? It makes no sense to me. And now finally, insurance companies are looking at the, 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 the studies and showing chiropractic is the number one treatment for neck pain and back pain and headaches. Just from a pain standpoint, they'll save money. Then we start incorporating things like nutrition at our offices we do, and then we incorporate supplements. And now we start to see that, wow, this really is the least expensive, most effective way to get healthy in most cases. It's not for everything, but for most. So if you'd like to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. My team of doctors would love to be your doctors. So if you're ready to get well, if you're just sick and tired of suffering, sick and tired of neck pain and back pain, you don't know what else to do, maybe you need a second opinion, go to my website, drjoe.com, make an appointment to come see us. You can do it right online. Then we'll call you and give you all the details. And take that step. The biggest complaint I get in my office is by far, why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I suffer so long with neck pain, headaches, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, muscle weakness, sciatica, uh, acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, obesity, brain fog? My answer is, I don't know. You should have listened to my shows long ago. You should have listened to my lectures long ago. So if you want to make an appointment, drjoe.com. And it, I got to say this. If you've ever been in a car accident, ever, if the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. The sooner you get to come see us, the better. Because the insurance companies, one of the easiest things they'll do to deny a claim is you waited too long to go to the doctor. So come see. And even if your accident was 50 years ago, folks, and there is no claim anymore, it's still your body. Well, my insurance isn't going to cover what I need. And that's all doctors. This is the biggest complaint I get from my, from my fellow physicians. My insurance company is going to cover it, so I'm not going to do it. It's your life. This is your, your, your health. I, if the insurance company doesn't cover it, step up. Take care of yourself. Because the insurance company doesn't care if you're sick and dying. So they only care if they have to pay the bill or not. So get yourself well. Get the nervous system, digestive system, and good nutrition as part of your treatment plan, a part of your lifestyle, you'll be happy. So the website again, drjoe.com. Lots of good information there. So we're talking today about uh, changing to a plant-based diet and is it safe and is it worth it? And the answer is a resounding yes. And so we started covering the position of the American Dietetic Association on a plant-based diet. Now, these are the PN. Now, I don't necessarily agree with everything the American Dietetic Association says, but I'm going to jump on a bandwagon on this one. Uh, in addition to assessing dietary adequacy, food and nutrition professionals can also play a key role in educating their patients about sources of specific nutrients, food purchases and preparation, dietary modifications to meet their health needs. So they're saying doctors should step up to the plate and start teaching people about health and nutrition. Here's the catch. I think it's a great idea. How many doctors study nutrition? How many doctors, when they went to medical school, learned, even had one class in nutrition? Not a lot. And so from a healthcare standpoint, if you go to your doctor who's not an expert in nutrition and ask him nutrition questions, you may not get the best answers or the most valid answers. It's not their fault. I'm going to defend my colleagues here. It's not the doctor's fault because they're not taught this stuff. 
And they might read an article, they might watch a commercial on TV and go, well, that's the information I got. I'm going to go with that one. Whatever that guy says, I'm going to do. I've studied nutrition for 35 years now. Well, 30, oh, 19, longer than that, I guess, 35, 37 years. How often? Every day. I research wellness every single day. Chiropractic care, neurology, physiology, biochemistry, nutrition. I study this stuff every single day. And every single day, I learn something new. Or I learn a new way to present what I've learned before. So this is why so many doctors and hospitals will send their patients to us and say, this is your ballpark, man. Now, if somebody needs surgery, I'm going to send you out to a neurosurgeon. If you need spinal surgery, if you need knee surgery, I'll send you to an orthopedic surgeon. If you need counseling, I'll send you to a counselor. If you need dental work, I'll send you to a dentist. There is no one doctor that can fix everything. And that's why I'm excited to see that now natural healthcare, God, I hate to use that word, is being into the mix with allopathic healthcare, with ordinary healthcare, I like to call it. And it's kind of fun because you, the patient, benefits the most. And it's wonderful when I get texts and emails and messages from nurses and doctors and hospital administrators saying, wow, that's going to save us a lot of time and money. Thanks for that tip. So I think it's a good idea to start incorporating the concept of eating right as part of your healthcare plan. Because I would say you need three things to be healthy, normally functioning nervous system. And from a chiropractic standpoint, that's what my team of doctors and I look at. If you have a pinched nerve going to your arm, well, your arm might be numb. But the problem isn't in your arm. It's from your, the nerve in your neck that goes to your arm. Well, if a nerve controls your arm, there's also a nerve that controls your liver, your spleen, your kidneys, your thyroid, your ovaries, your prostate. Everything is controlled by nerves. And for some reason, we know that if we have sciatic pain shooting down the back of our leg, it comes from the low back. But what if the bowels aren't working properly? Or the heart or the lungs or the liver or the spleen? Those are also on the other end of nerves, just like your leg is on the other end of a nerve. And if you have a pinched nerve in the spine, it's going to affect the organs. If you have a pinched nerve in your back, it's maybe affecting the colon, sex organs, and bladder, but you may, it may show up as leg pain or back pain or numbness or tingling or f- foot numbness or weakness. That's all coming from the low back. So the concept now that I, I'm going to predict this, five years, new trend in healthcare, is going to be that we understand and we teach that nerves control organs and that if you have a pinched nerve, that organ isn't going to work right. So this is what chiropractic has been teaching since September 18th, 1895, it's becoming mainstream. But listen to my old shows. If you go back in my archives from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I guess they're in the archives. I don't even know where I have them somewhere. We talked about things. We talked about hydrogenated oils and trans fats being the number one cause of heart disease. Guess what? Now it's, it's commonplace. We talked about chiropractic being excellent for pain. Now it's, it's commonplace. You read the studies. Yes, the number one uh, treatment for back pain with fastest results least amount of money with least amount of uh, time missed from work, chiropractic care for back pain now. Stuff we've talked about. So the things we talk about today, I promise you, making my prediction now so that 10 or 15 years from now, I can go back and look at these shows and say, I was right then too. That we have to understand that nerves are controlled by organs. Organs are controlled by nerves, I'm sorry. And if you have a pinched nerve, the organ can't work right. And so that's going to be part of uh, wellness. It's going to be part of healthcare. It has to be. Because we have a doctor shortage. I, I'm going to do a segment on that in a couple, of, a couple of shows from now. We have a doctor shortage. Less and less doctors are going to school. They can't afford to, first of all. Most doctors now, chiropractors, medical doctors, are graduating with about $220,000 in debt. And they didn't work for eight years because they were going to school. So you're starting your life out in your career where there's not a lot of jobs available that are high paying anymore at $220,000 in debt. How do you do this? We can't. I mean, that's the, the business end of healthcare. And so we have a doctor shortage. I just talked to one of my colleagues here before I went on the air and he says, my doctor quit. I got a new doctor now. My doctor just quit. I said, yeah, doctors are quitting because it's not fun anymore. It used to be you can treat the patient. Now you have to fill out paperwork and forms and the insurance company says, you don't need care anymore. Never met you. And they're deciding on your health. So the one thing you have control over is your diet. And that's what we're talking about today is can, can, should we go to a plant-based diet or should we go to a more plant-based diet? And the answer is a resounding yes. But I'm going to give you reasons why and then how you can do it as well. So if you want to make an appointment to come see us, go to my website, drjoe.com. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Supplement-wise, I have to talk about supplements every show. I strongly advise if you do nothing else, at least do Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two powders. I mix a scoop of them together eat, uh, together in, in a cold water, almond milk, coconut milk. Tastes great. 
and it gives you the minimum amount of nutrients you need every day. We take fruits and vegetables and juice them, take the water out and the sugar out at a very low temperature, so it's safe for diabetics. Uh, Cancer patients love it, because many times with cancer patients on chemo, they can't hold food down. They can hold down the Super Greens, the essential source. We even use this for patients that are on feeding tubes. We put the Super Greens, the essential source into the feeding tube with a mashed up banana, and it's amazing what happens because they're getting nutrients now. People with colitis, Crohn's, uh, it works great too because the bowels are so inflamed, it's easy to absorb. So whether you're healthy and you want to get more healthy or you're really sick and you want to start getting healthy, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, minimum amount of nutrients. Those are on my website, drjoe.com. If you come into our offices, A, you save shipping. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. And B, if you come into the office, if you buy three, you get one free. Make it easy for you. So the website, drjoe.com, folks, stop suffering needlessly. Neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, car accidents. Come see us. Most people are extremely happy that they made that decision. Got to run, folks. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. The website, drjoe.com. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening to For the Health Fit. Remember to subscribe to this podcast, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 Eastern Time on wsbradio.com and on the WSB Radio app.